Welcome to Precision Riflecraft and thank you for joining me. I just got this Athlon Midas BTR Gen 2 4.5 to 27 by 50 rifle scope with uh, reticle in the second focal plane and upon pulling it out of the box I noticed what I would describe as a fatal design flaw that I thought I would bring to your attention and help you grow your knowledge a little bit about how uh, second focal plane rifle scopes differ from first focal plane rifle scopes. Uh, this is a design flaw that's not exclusive to Athlon. I'm sure you'll be able to find other brands that have made the same mistake. And overall, I'll tell you that this is uh, quite a good rifle scope. I'm quite impressed with the build quality. Uh, the turrets are really nice and tactile. They feel really good. And uh, the internals are very well made. They have a very good reputation for reliable tracking. I will say that at the price point, these scopes offer extremely good value and I'll actually be replacing this rifle scope with another model of Athlon for the rifle I purchased it for. Now before we go any further, I'll summarize how second focal plane differs from first focal plane. Uh, generally the highest end rifle scopes will always be first focal plane, which means that as you zoom in on your target, as you increase the magnification from uh, one end of the magnification range to the other, uh, the reticle will grow with the sight picture. You'll be zooming both at the same time, which means that the subtensions on the reticle, both for elevation and windage, will be correct at all magnification levels. That's generally why first focal plane rifle scopes are more desirable than second focal plane rifle scopes, because you can be sure that those reticle subtensions are usable and correct at all magnification levels. There's generally a price savings with second focal plane rifle scopes and other advantages like the thickness of the lines being sort of ideal uh, regardless of what magnification level you're using. And uh, I personally have no problem with second focal plane rifle scopes. I own a few of them. Um, I do think that they have their place and um, I didn't hesitate to buy this particular one. But the thing to remember about second focal plane rifle scopes is that the reticle subtensions are only correct at a given magnification level. Now generally that's going to be at the max magnification which is uh, common across many manufacturers and uh, that's a really good thing because generally you're going to be using those uh, holdover hash marks when you're uh, shooting at long range and you've uh, uh, already zoomed all the way in to get the best possible uh, view of your target. Some rifle scopes whose reticle is located in the second focal plane uh, however use a specific given magnification that's not the upper level of its travel. So with this one, the reticle is said to be correct at 15 power. You have to use the rifle scope at the magnification level of 15 power in order for the reticle subtensions to be correct. Uh, here is that fatal flaw I promised to tell you about. When the reticle subtensions are correct at the max magnification level, you know that you can always repeat that magnification level perfectly and thus have correct subtensions by simply maxing out the travel on that magnification adjustment. However, when it is a given magnification range somewhere in the middle of that travel, you really need some kind of uh, detent to assure you that you are in the right place. So I'm going to give you an example of that. Uh, this is a Vortex Viper HST 6 to 24 by 50. It also has a reticle in the second focal plane. And um, this particular reticle is correct not at its max magnification of 24 power, but at 18 power. And so check out what Vortex has done here. You start at six power and as you're zooming up, you'll reach that 18 power level where the reticle subtensions are correct, boom. And it clicks into place. There is a detent there. There's also a red dot, but more importantly, there's a tactile detent that it just sort of falls into place on. And it's very repeatable. You can be assured that whenever you use that magnification level, boom, it just clicks into place. It's always the same place. That assures me that I'm always at the same 18 power, I'm always at the same spot when I'm using that magnification level. And that gives me peace of mind when using the holdover subtensions on that reticle. Unfortunately with this Athlon, there is no such detent and it's not even clear where they want you to stop. So there's no red dot for example, the, you know, do they want you to stop on the 1 or the 5 or somewhere in the middle? And can you do that exactly the same way each time? I doubt it. There's nothing there. So uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the magnification level at which the reticle subtensions are correct is not repeatable. And that's really what it's all about, guys. It's about repeatability and consistency, which unfortunately this does not offer. You therefore want to be aware of this whenever you're shopping for rifle scopes with uh, reticle located in the second focal plane. And um, be aware that 
This is something that can be found not only in rifle scopes, but also in spotting scopes. So here I have a Bushnell T-Series 15 to 45 by 60 spotting scope with a reticle in the first focal plane. And uh, as you can see, as you zoom in on your target, you're also increasing the size of the uh, reticle subtensions. They are zooming in together and those subtensions are correct regardless of the magnification level you're using. So occasionally you will run into spotting scopes that have reticles and you want to be certain that uh, if uh, you find a spotting scope with a reticle in the second focal plane, that, the, um, you know, that you're able to repeat that magnification level the same way each time. Obviously, it's not going to be an issue with a first focal plane spotting scope like this or first focal plane rifle scopes. But certainly, if you're buying a second focal plane rifle scope, you're really going to want some kind of repeatability uh, in that magnification level at which the reticle subtensions are correct. And uh, like I said, with most rifle scopes in the second focal plane, it's going to be max magnification, and that's not going to be a problem for you because you just make sure you're all the way to uh, that uh, extreme end of its travel, and those subtensions are going to be the same each time. But you know, unfortunately, with something like this, <clears throat> it's just uh, there's nothing there. There's just nothing there. So, you know, that's definitely something you want to be aware of. Uh, like I said, I do like Athlon, and I am impressed overall with the build quality of this rifle scope. I'm going to be replacing it with another Athlon, a higher end one, possibly a first focal plane model. And I'll be avoiding these Athlon second focal plane rifle scopes now that I know that uh, they're still uh, at this uh, point in their development, uh, still not looking after this very, very critical detail. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your interest, and I hope to see you again on the next one.